guys. Welcome to church for Home of Christ Kids. And here we are back at Hawk by Central with another exciting discussion on what the Bible says about being content. Do you remember what contentment is? Yeah, that's right. It's learning to be okay with what you have. And I thought maybe we would begin today with a little story about me from a long, long, long time ago, like about 10 or 11 months ago. So when the pandemic first closed everything down and we had to stop going to work and stop going to school, I began going on walks. We live by a great little park and I so enjoyed walking around that park and walking through my neighborhood. I found it a good time to think and pray and enjoy nature. And it really helped me from going completely wackadoodle crazy from being at home every day, all day. Remember those days? Well, I soon began to walk to other neighborhoods farther away or down on the Stevens Creek Trail. And I walked so much that pretty soon my old tennis shoes started to wear out and I needed to get a new pair of shoes. So I began to shop online for some cool new athletic shoes. And it's probably no surprise to you that there are hundreds of styles of athletic shoes. Woo! I mean, there were so many, I just couldn't decide. There were walking shoes with shiny, sparkly things on them, and high-tech tennis shoes, and shock-absorbing cushions, and shoes scientifically created to make you walk faster and better and upside down. But I didn't need shoes with space age technology or anything too fancy, just a comfortable shoe that I liked the look of. So eventually I settled on these guys. And I loved them so much. They were super comfortable and I thought they looked great. And so I began to go walking in my new shoes and I was really thankful at how good they felt on my feet. They were so soft and comfy. It was like my feet were wrapped in a cloud of cushy marshmallows. I was so happy. I was content. But as some time went by, sometimes I would be walking at Shoreline Park or down at the Blackberry Farm. And I kind of started to notice other people's workout shoes. And I would be like, oh, those are cute. Or, wow, look at their cool shoes. And slowly, I went from being content to not being so content. And you know what? It kind of made me feel yucky. But thankfully, I began to see how foolish I was being. And so I quit looking for a cooler, better walking shoe. And I just enjoyed the ones I had, which by the way, I still think are awesome. 
And in today's Bible lesson, we will meet a real life guy who struggled with looking at and wanting what other people had. Now, this guy actually was the richest person in the land. And yet he kept wanting more and more and more. And guess what? It made him feel miserable. And when he couldn't get what he wanted, he actually threw a tantrum. And in our story, instead of just a pair of shoes, he ends up wanting something huge, something that belonged to somebody else. And it causes him to do something terrible, something so very bad. And by not being content, this man hurt a bunch of other people and he hurt his own family. Have you ever really wanted something that someone else had? Yeah, me too. And that's why this story is a good reminder for us to be on our guard against wanting more and more things. And to remember that wanting what other people have doesn't make us happy. In fact, it can often leave us feeling miserable. So look for that exciting lesson from the book of 1 Kings at the end of the video. And now we are going from a story about my shoes to an announcement about shoe boxes. It's our very last announcement because today, Sunday, November 14th, is the last day to return your finished shoe box. Now, you can still use the outdoor drop-off table at church until five o'clock tonight. So, until next week, remember that we love you and God is good all the time.
over mountains high, through the valleys low, God is good. Wherever we go, from the brightest days to the darkest nights, God is good all the time. Oh. oh, oh. While we do this, exercise is important, you know, or of course. I mean, I'd rather be riding my bike outside right now, but the weather isn't cooperating. But that's okay, because I can ride this bike inside. Ooh, see that? I am showing contentment. Contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. So I'm okay with this stationary bike. You know, they've made all kinds of advancements with stationary bikes. <gasps> I want one of those bikes that has all those different settings where you can make it feel like you're going like uphill or downhill. Whee! <laughs> no, you know what I really want? I want one that has a TV screen in the front so it looks like you're riding a bike through mountains or, 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 or next to the ocean. Maybe I can use my laptop. <sighs> Paris, France. <gasps> C'est magnifique. Mm. Ooh, I want a bike that comes with a built-in trainer. Someone to like pump me up while I ride. Come on, Erica. You can do it. That bike won't pedal itself. Yeah. Move. I can do it. Move. Yeah, let me more. Too bad all I got is this old thing. All it does is pedal. In today's story, we'll hear about a king who always wanted more and more and more. I kind of feel like him right now. It's not fun. <sighs> what are you slowing down for? You've got to keep moving if you're going to make it yes. all the way to Paris. You want to see the Eiffel Tower, don't you? 
Oui. I can't hear okay. you. Move. I will. Move. See you in Paris. Move. Move. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Kings, Chapter 21. After David and Solomon, many kings ruled the lands of Judah and Israel. Some of them listened to God, but most did not. King Ahab was worse than any other king of Israel before him. He only thought of himself and did exactly as he wanted to do. Do exactly as I want. Yes, your highness. Uh, what do you want? Hmm. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and one... Oh, it escapes me. Ah, just bring me some pears flambe. No one ever said no to King Ahab. Not even his wife, Queen Jezebel. Am I the most fabulous king to ever rule this land? Yes, of course, because you have me. <laughs> king Ahab was certain he had everything he could ever want. That is, until he took a drive into the neighboring town of Jezreel. Ooh, just look at that lovely vineyard. It is perfection. Stop at once. King Ahab examined the green leafy vines and the heavy bunches of grapes. What fantastic fruit. The soil must be excellent. You, over there. Who, me? Who, me, your majesty? Uh, who, me, your majesty? Of course, you. Do you own this fine vineyard? I do, your majesty. Excellent. You must sell it to me at once, and I shall turn it into a vegetable garden. No. Excuse me? Your majesty? I'll pay good money. I'll trade you a better vineyard. I said no, your majesty. May the Lord keep me from giving you the land my family handed down to me. You? What? No! <laughs> King Ahab was enraged. When he returned to the palace, he threw himself down on his bed and refused to eat anything, even date cakes dipped in honey. Why are you in such a bad mood? Why won't you eat anything? Neighbor won't give me his fine yard. Oh, snap out of it. You're the king. I'll get you that vineyard. Queen Jezebel was just as bad as her husband. Or maybe worse. She wrote a letter to the leaders of Naboth's town. Here is your mission, which you must accept. Number one, announce a special day and give Naboth an important seat. Two, have two bad guys sit across from Naboth and claim that he cursed God and the king. Three, drag Naboth out of the city and throw stones at him until he dies. That should clear. Queen Jezebel sent her message, and the leaders of Naboth's town followed it to the letter. Tell the queen, mission accomplished. Queen Jezebel was delighted by this terrible news and immediately went to find King Ahab. Oh, woe is me. Naboth won't give me. Get up! Take over Naboth's vineyard. He's dead. What? <laughs> mine! All mine! King Ahab ordered his chariot and set off at once for Jezreel. <laughs> we'll rip out these annoying vines, plant peas, parsnips, potatoes. But even as Ahab garden partied, God spoke to the prophet Elijah. Go down to see Ahab. You will find him in Naboth's vineyard. Ahab has gone there to take it over. God gave Elijah a special message for the king. Elijah had faced Ahab before, and knew the king would not be pleased to see him. Okay, here goes. Elijah traveled to Jezreel and found Ahab in the vineyard. 
pull out that row of vines. Dig up the soil. King Ahab. The king turned. His eyes narrowed as he spied Elijah. <gasps> My enemy, you found me. The Lord says, haven't you murdered a man? Haven't you taken his property? Well, 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 no, no, not me personally. I, I, and now he doesn't need it anymore. <laughs> so you've done what is evil in the sight of the Lord. The Lord says, I am going to bring horrible trouble on you. You have caused Israel to sin. Oh. For once, Ahab listened to a message from God. He tore his clothes, a sign of great sorrow for what he had done. He put on the clothing people wore to show sadness. No food. Not even date cakes dipped in honey. Not even date cakes dipped in honey. King Ahab and Jezebel had made themselves miserable, taking more and more. And in the end, both of them paid for it. Yeesh, King Ahab really wanted Naboth's vineyard. It's okay to want things, but Ahab wanted it so badly that it made him miserable. He even refused to eat. Has it ever happened to you? Have you ever wanted something so badly that it was all you could think about? Maybe it made you like super sad when you couldn't get it. Or maybe you threw a tantrum. If that sounds like something you might do, you may need a little help with contentment. Wanting things is fine. It gives you something to work toward or to look forward to. But, but when, when you, you want, want more and, and more and more and more and more, it can make you feel like Ahab, miserable. Jesus once said, watch out. Be on guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Jesus knew there is so much more to life than the stuff we have. There are memories to be made, adventures to be experienced. Ooh, there are relationships to be grown with God and with others. These are things that will last long after the stuff we wanted has broken or <laughs> gone out of style. So it's okay to want things, but here's the one thing to remember. Wanting more and more can make you miserable. So maybe one day I'll get a stationary bike with a few bells and whistles, but in the meantime, I'll ride this one and imagine it's springtime in Paris. My imagination is very vivid. Au revoir!